there's a couple key things about compressible flow. Let me give you the results. The speed of sound can be shown to be C, that's the symbol for the speed of sound used in this textbook, related to a derivative, how pressure changes with density, assuming isentropic process. That's, that's the, the basic equation. So C is the square root of the rate of change of pressure with respect to density holding entropy constant. It's a property relation. One property, speed of sound, is related to other properties, but not just how you add or subtract or multiply. Remember, H is equal to U plus PV. That's clearly how a new property is related to existing properties. But this one, it, it, it throws you for a loop the first time you see it, but it's just it's not the multiplying and adding. It's the derivative of. It's the slope of a line. And this line is based on holding S constant. We'll derive that. When you have this relationship, if you assume for air, because we do a lot of calculations with air as, a, as the fluid, you find that the speed of sound in air, assuming a constant specific heat, is equal to the square root of KRT. That's a very easy to use relationship. You can calculate the speed of sound in different gases. Uh, typically, air uh, is 1.4 if you have a monoatomic gas like helium, right? You're at a birthday party, you don't do this, but you inhale helium and speak, and it sounds funny. Well, you're sp changing the speed of sound in that, in that gas, and then that sounds real funny. But that would be uh, 1.67, okay? That's the different K for monoatomic gases. And then you have the R, the gas constant, R bar divided by the molar mass, and then the absolute value of temperature. So the higher the temperature, the higher the speed of sound is in an ideal gas. Then we'll talk about the Mach number. The Mach number is the relationship or the ratio of some speed to the speed of sound in that fluid. Often we talk about Mach number flow through air, aircraft going through air. It's traveling at Mach 3, traveling at Mach 0.8. These three concepts are important for, and they uh, basically, f when you have sound, it's basically a pressure wave. What you're hearing is a pressure wave traveling to you. So it's compressible effects. Let's do a quick review of how you get this equation for the speed of sound in a gas or in a fluid actually. So the pressure is the sound wave is a pressure disturbance. So consider a piston, you bump it so it's it's got a change in velocity. And way ahead of that velocity in a stationary fluid, there'll be a propagating front. And that propagating front, that moving front of a wave induced by the movement of that piston, will travel at a some speed C. We'll drive the relationship for it. So the quiescent fluid or stationary fluid is enthalpy H, pressure P, density rho, and then behind it, it has a dV, so it has a change in speed. It's now going at the piston speed, and it has H plus dH for the uh, enthalpy P plus dP, so it's a higher pressure, a larger enthalpy, and a change in the density rho plus d rho. So take a look at plotting V, velocity, from the face of the piston out. You'll see right where the wave is, there's a jump from zero velocity ahead of it, stationary fluid, to a constant velocity, dV, behind it. Likewise, the pressure, it's some P, nominal P, but then there's a behind the wave, or the front is a P plus delta P pressure. Consider a control volume enclosing the wave front and riding on it so you're going at the speed C. You're not accelerating, so you can do um, that control volume is not accelerating, but it's moving at constant speed. You see that from the perspective of that control volume, fluid is entering it on the right at speed C with enthalpy H, pressure P, density rho, and leaving on the left at C minus delta V, and then the properties of enthalpy, pressure, and density. Consider a mass balance. So what flows in in the left is equal to what flows, sorry, out in the left is equal to in in the right. You expand out each relationship. It's just rho AV, rho AV. 
you cancel the areas and you neglect the small change in pressure times the small change in volume that's neglecting the hot higher order terms small two small epsilons multiplied maybe in numerical methods you've seen that you neglect higher order terms and you're left with this relationship go do an energy balance for the same control volume so you have what comes in in the left equal to what oh, sorry in in the right equal to out in the left do some algebra you get dh equal to cdv then you use temperature entropy relation tds relations that we covered noting that we're going to consider isentropic disturbance so it's isentropic boost across that pressure wave so tds is zero but dh is minus vdp a lot of these pieces of the puzzle, they don't make sense until you put them together, right? So you put these together by combining the mass balance, energy balance, and that thermodynamic relation for entropy being constant, you get C squared is equal to dPd rho, where S is constant, and that's what we set out to show. Take that now and apply it for an ideal gas. What do we know about an ideal gas? Do we know that PV to the K is a constant for an isentropic process? It is. So in other words, you can say P is equal to that constant times rho to the K. Actually, it's uh, P is equal to the constant. Yeah, that's right, rho to the K. If you take the derivative of pressure with respect to density, assuming con entropy is constant, you get that constant times k times rho to the k minus 1. Then you can uh, replace that constant by, this constant is PV to the k, or that constant is also P over rho to the k, true? Mass density is inverse of specific volume. And so you replace that constant right here and then you cancel and you're left with the PDS is equal to uh, you have K times P over Rho but it's always an ideal gas so P is equal to Rho RT or P over Rho is equal to RT you're putting the pieces of the puzzle together so you can replace that by RT and now you see that that's equal to C squared. So C is equal to square root of KRT. What's the limitation? It's for an ideal gas. Don't apply it for liquid water. That's exactly it. Right. And so uh, in Chapter 9, I think there's a nice table saying if you have an ideal gas, constant specific heats, undergoing isentropic processes, you can relate P and V, P and T, T and V. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Now, you have the definition of the Mach number, M. Sometimes people put MA, sometimes I might write MA for Mach number, but here we'll just use, try to be consistent with the book. What does the book use? M. Does the book use M for anything else? Molar mass. So guess what? You got to look at the context. Is that M stand for molar mass or that M for the Mach number? Anyway, that's not too hard to discern. But you have V divided by C. What is the actual speed divided by the speed of sound or the sonic speed in that air or substance fluid? If you have subsonic, oh, that's the Mach number is less than one. And usually if the Mach number is less than about 0.3, there are no compressible effects, even though it may be air. It's just, you can, if, even for air, you can neglect it and treat it incompressible if it's not going very fast. But as soon as you have air flowing around an object and you're starting to get above 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, you better watch out because you're, you're having the possibility of some uh, compressible effects not being negligible because air is compressible. Sonic, that's when the Mach number is 1. Transonic, Mach numbers around 1. See, sonic is right at 1. It could be 0.98. Oh, that's transonic. Or 1.03 transonic. It's around 1. 
supersonic, greater than one, and hypersonic is like super, super, right? So it's the Mach number much, much greater than one. Do we actually have some applications out there where you have hypersonic flow? You sure do. Look at the barrel of a tank or the barrel of a weapon, what comes out. They're very fast. Okay. So you can have hypersonic ballistics. As well as somebody was saying, oh, the Department of Defense is trying to have a hypersonic aircraft. And uh, I think they had a test not too long ago that was a little bit of a failure. Yeah, very recent, huh? Blew up. So, um, but there definitely are su a supersonic aircraft, right? And you, for a while, you could fly in them commercially. Um, go across the Atlantic very quickly, across the Pacific 